Uh, thank you very much, Alan and Simon. Uh, this is a quick account of some independent research. Um, we're, not a, we're not a lab, we're a research outfit. Um, the proposition is that we can actually make assay quite a lot simpler. Uh, there are various reasons why that would be a good thing. Standardisation, uh, less confusion, uh, and possibly dramatically reduced costs. Uh, this is not a today proposition, but it might be a next year proposition. Uh, I just want to take you through the work uh, that represents a, uh, a, uh, a mid-life PhD attempt. Uh, uh, and um, I would just like to also acknowledge the speakers who came before me for some really excellent run-up. Uh, I don't have to go through that again. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, minerals exploration, production, and trade needs accurate assay data. But we don't like litharge, we don't like HF, we don't like perchloric acid or cyanide. Um, and I think that today's talks are evidence of just how much effort is being expended to uh, move on past fire assay. So the work I've been doing has been centred around an old method and a very good method, sodium peroxide fusion, which uh, Richard mentioned. Uh, sodium peroxide fusion has been around since the 1950s. It's a good simple method. Sodium peroxide is a bit like sodium hydroxide with teeth, sodium hydroxide being something you can get from Bunnings. And the sodium peroxide reagent system really is just a set of chemicals that come from salt in the first place. Sodium peroxide, yellow granules in a jar, we might think that's some sort of high-tech material. It's not. You can make that at the bench if you need to. We don't need to stay with the old um, limitations of impurity or perceived impurity in these fluxes. Uh, you can make sodium peroxide out of very pure sodium hydroxide at the bench. Uh, some of this is uh, IP, which we don't have time to go into. Once you've fused your sample with that sodium peroxide and some hydroxide, you dissolve it in hydrochloric acid, that's a good way to do it, and proceed to analyse your sample. Sodium peroxide fusion is very, very versatile. You can do most of the periodic table using it. Um, you'll see from my bio notes, I have worked with companies that have uh, offered quite uh, comprehensive sodium peroxide products um, and what's perhaps not as well known in the industry is that peroxide can do the PGEs and gold. It's been used as a decomposition for uh, PPB level PGE and gold since the 1950s, since the early days of radiochemistry because you can get PGEs and gold into solution using peroxide fusion. Here's just a few results, indicative results, using what I've termed 3G ICPMS. ICPMS has gotten better. It's getting better rapidly in the last three or four years. It has gotten much better, lower signal to noise. It's getting more sensitive. And those old limitations that we can't get the sensitivity, those limitations are starting to be questionable. We've got more sensitivity. We can get low detection limits. And these are some results done with glassy carbon crucibles, which have few bad habits, um, using a, very, a fairly recent um, ICPMS. And I've just tabulated crustal abundances across the top here and the detection limits that we obtained with some orientation work. Uh, those detection limits are plenty low enough to see rare earths in rocks. Uh, and would qualify, five years ago, those were research, research level detection limits. We can do that every day of the week now. Um, and some Aureus standards and some Psalms. The only uh, whoopsie in there is a, an old, a result for, I think it's Europium in NIMS, Psalm 2. Uh, who's to say the old value's right? Um, more work needed. On to gold. Um, we have published a paper, uh, not an easy paper to read, uh, which you'll find if you Google it, um, Daniel Laird and Hefter, and we've presented some data at a, at a spectrometry conference. 
when we dissolve gold in hydrochloric acid via sodium peroxide fusion and run that through a fairly sensitive MS, we get perfectly good data. Uh, we also get perfectly good data running it through an old-fashioned graphite furnace AA if we do a little bit of work up on the sample first. Sample weights can go, we've done 25 gram fusions. I'll come back to that. How can you do a 25 gram peroxide fusion? And the answer is we start to reinterpret what we mean by peroxide fusion. And I will come back to that. Um, there's no problem with sensitivity. This is just raw peroxide fusion uh, read on an MS. And we end up at about 0.01 ppm, 10 ppb, or 5 ppb if you really want to scratch at it. Uh, oh, a slide for the spectrometrist. I think we can skip that one. Now, we can use sodium peroxide fusion to do gold and PGE at sub ppb concentrations. There's a long history of that. There's 50, 60 years of research geochemistry, uh, radiochemical work. Um, we, can, we can go sub PPB using peroxide fusions, a little bit of a chemical workup on it, and then onto the ICP. It's about the same level of complexity as a nickel sulfide fusion after the fusion. Uh, easily automated. Okay, but gold is a problem because it's spotty and gold particles are ductile and they're difficult to communicate. And not much has happened in 30 years to overcome that problem. Uh, the grief starts at 100 microns. One of the problems we've got with getting anywhere with gold prep quality is the lack of a way of describing it. Uh, labs will prep samples to 75 microns, but that means 75 microns off the laser particle sizer or a sieve. It's got nothing to do with the size of the gold particles. The gold particles can make it through these grinding processes untouched. Now, we don't have time for any of this, but G's sampling equation works rather well in reverse. If you do replicate assays, you can deduce a working sample size, a gold particle size. This is useful because we need, as well as better analytical methods to analyse gold, we need better prep. Uh, this little plot here just shows um, statistically derived gold particle sizes agreeing reasonably well with sieve fraction sizes. These are uh, rock matrices with gold particles ground in them. Um, the work picks up from uh, work from the late 80s, uh, which we don't have time to refer to, but I'll acknowledge Brad Wisson as one of the authors. Thank you. Um, how do you make grinding work better? First thing you do is stop the sample caking. We're just going back to basics here. A sample that cakes is a sample that you don't know which bit got lost in the bowl. And a work in geochemist's experience of pulverisation is that most things cake when you grind them hard. Uh, I've got 30 years of experience of seeing that. So let's use grinding agents. They're available. There are technical grinding agents we can put in samples now at far less than 1% weight for weight so we don't make a mess of the sample uh, the way that, for instance, pressed powder XRF would. Uh, and we get clean. It means we can grind cleaner for longer. We can go to five-minute grinds. And we just keep grinding. Um, the top results are from a two-kilo bowl manual. The bottom results are from a good old 250-gram bowl. The point is that after five or ten minutes, we're still grinding. And we're getting evidence of particle size, both from sieve and statistically based evidence, that we're going way under 100 microns. Uh, 50 microns is achievable, maybe lo lower. Okay, so the indications are that we can grind gold. If we can grind gold, we can get those sample sizes down. If we can get sample sizes down, we're within range of sodium peroxide fusion. Can peroxide fusion decompose those particles? Yeah, we've done the kinetics, a bit of lab-based research. Um, this is where the key is in making this sort of techno uh, this technique viable. Sodium peroxide works really well when you mix it with a whole lot of sodium hydroxide. And it's unpublished science, which we're developing and will publish. Um, you, don't, uh, you don't need very much peroxide in the brew at all. Um, the left-hand axis just shows the size of the, the thickness lost from a, a test wire. We're up at two or 
250 microns of gold. Okay, so where to? Uh, we have developed a Marawa submission. Uh, Marawa like the look of it. We need sponsorship. There's been very little, if any, independent work done in workaday bread and butter geochem. And the big questions are, do automated pulverisers work? And can we validate a really broadly scoped multi-element method for rocks, for metallurgical samples, for veg, for everything? And that's the proposition. Thank you very much.